So as shared in the beginning of the day, we are now going to talk about the APIS Innovator Program. And the APIS platform, as I shared, was created to bring patient communities and other key stakeholders together to address the escalating challenges in healthcare systems in a patient-centric way. You know, and our purpose was not just to engage in dialogues, though of course it's a necessary starting point, but to really make sure that through partnerships, we were able to catalyze impact in each community and in each country. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to support innovative ideas and solutions that really drive um, impact for patients, the APIS Innovator Program was launched in 2022, just last year. And through this program, we, we identify and partner with remarkable patient organizations that have found innovative ways to address hurdles that stand in the way of patients getting the care that they need. And we, as the APIS Innovator Program, work with these organizations to support them to grow and scale existing programs that are already making a huge impact. So last year, 23 patient organizations from 11 countries and territories across Asia Pacific, Middle East, and Africa entered the Innovator Program. And two initiatives were selected and won based on four criteria. The first was impact, the second, innovation, the third, sustainability, and finally, scalability. The two initiatives were number one, the ICANSER Foundation, which is a breast cancer advocacy organization. And the second organization that won last year was Psoriasis Philippines, which is an advocacy organization for people living with psoriasis. So today, I'm really excited for us to hear from our two 2022 winners to tell us about their journey and the impact that they have achieved over the last few months. So to start us off, I would like to welcome Paul Mendoza. Paul is the president of Psoriasis Philippines and he's going to present the winning initiative from last year called Wellness Weekends Philippines. Over to you, Paul. Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all who are joining us today. And uh, just, to start, uh, I will be presenting Wellness Weekends Philippines, the uh, the, pro the program and campaign that we submitted in APS Innovator Program. So next slide, please. So before we start, I just want to introduce our organization. So we are Psoriasis Philippines. We are a support group for patients living with psoriatic disease here in the Philippines. And currently we have 10,000.7 members on our Facebook group and over 34,000 followers in Facebook. And we have over 56 chapters all over the Philippines as well. Next slide. Uh, so we started as an online group. And uh, as we started in Yahoo groups before, an email platform provided by Yahoo. And as the social media evolved, uh, we establish our presence in, in digital and uh, social media platforms. Next slide. So this is the project that we submitted last year. So it's Weekends with Sorfield. And uh, this is an online uh, live broadcast every Saturday, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And when we won the APC Innovative Program, uh, we thought that why not expand our reach and not just talk about psoriasis. And we decided to, talk, uh, to make this program to include other health conditions, especially non-communicable diseases, and involve other patient organizations here in the Philippines so that they can have a platform to share their voice, to share their stories as well. Next slide, please. So this is Wellness Weekends Philippines. We rebranded it so that it will encompass other health conditions and not just psoriasis. Next slide. So these are some of the objectives that we had for this program. First is to create a program that can engage the public. Second is to have a channel where one can get accurate and right information about health conditions. Third is to educate our members about the full spectrum of psoriatic disease 
comorbidities and other related NCDs. And lastly, to have a platform where other patient organizations can create awareness about their condition and advocacy work. So before I go further, let me just introduce our team. So we prepared a short video for you. Next slide. All right, so they are my team composed of uh, the technical director, host, screenwriters, scriptwriters, and project coordinators and researchers. So now uh, just an update on what we did. So we had a 35 episode for this Wellness Weekends Philippines. And we have, I'm happy to say that before in, wellness, uh, in Weekends Philippines, uh, Weekends with Sorfield, we have around 50 to 100 live audiences, but during Wellness Weekends Philippines, we have an average of um, 800 uh, viewers every episode. And for this year, we have a 288,000 reach. And compared to last year, uh, it went up uh, around uh, 10%. And uh, we have 10,000 engagement as well. As you can see here on the screen are some of the top five most viewed and watched episodes that we had. And every episode, we have an average of 12,000 views per episode compared to last year of having just around 8,000 per episode. So we are very happy that we have expanded our viewership and hopefully that we have helped educate the public about different health conditions. Next slide, please. So here are some of the testimonials from other patient leaders and patient organizations who have been guests here in Wellness Weekends Philippines. Next slide. Hi, I am Rowena and I'm from the Scleroderma Awareness Philippines group. I first knew of Psoriasis Philippines way back in 2020 when I was invited as guest speaker in the Philippine Rheumatology Association Annual Convention. Since then, I have been friends with my brothers and sisters from Psoriasis Philippines and they helped me by inviting me to other patient organization events. I was also invited to their weekend episodes as, uh, as, as a patient to share my experiences. Recently, they had this new project where they called it WWP or Wellness Weekend Philippines. Since guesting on these episodes and being able to share about my condition, I can safely say now that I am one of the faces of scleroderma. And my appearances in this show greatly helped in, in our spreading awareness of scleroderma in the Philippines and in other countries as well. And for that, I, on behalf of my group, will, al will always be grateful to Psoriasis Philippines. And here's another video testimonial from Dialysis PH. Next slide. Hello, I'm Reynaldo S. Abacan Jr., President and Founder of Dialysis PH Sport Group Incorporated. I've been a guest on Wellness Weekend Philippines a couple of times, and they have been very helpful in raising awareness for our cause. Every experience has been incredible, and many of our members have taken inspiration from the conversation we had during the live sessions. We are very thankful to Psoriasis Philippines for giving us the opportunity to be a part of the Wellness Weekend Philippines. Pabuhay kayo mga kabalat! And here's another testimonial from our guest host, who was empowered to host with us in this program from Lupus Inspired Advocacy. Next slide. I would like to commend the Psoriasis Philippines for initiating Wellness Weekends Philippines. Wellness Weekends Philippines became an avenue 
for different conditions who need to reach out to the public. It became a steady source of right information on conditions who are discriminated or stigmatized through their looks, symptoms, and needs. As one of the featured conditions, I am thankful to Wellness Weekends Philippines for always giving lupus and other rheumatic diseases time on their show. We get to educate the patients and their families while debunking public connotations. As one of the hosts, Wellness Weekends Philippines has taught me a lot on the conditions of which I am the host. I always learn something new about the condition or topic for discussion. I get to know the perspective of people with conditions other than mine and it became a learning experience on how to le- relate more to other people. Hosting in Wellness Weekends Philippines also honed me as a good communicator and listener. Again, I am grateful to Psoriasis Philippines for always sharing their time, effort, and resources to other conditions. May God continue to bless Psoriasis Philippines family and may Wellness Weekends Philippines continue to be a force in sharing awareness and education for the Filipinos and the world. And here's another testimonial from our guest doctor. Next slide. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Brian Guevara, dermatologist. Congratulations to Rises Philippines for a remarkable initiative, Wellness Weekends. This platform enabled psoriasis patients to hear, listen, and feel the different coaches, speakers, lecturers every time we give a really good topic, for example, about psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, and of course, different lifestyle modification, and so on. This is an important tool also in terms of reaching out to a lot of our patients suffering from psoriasis. The impact in terms of this initiative has a remarkable change about psoriasis. There are more patients being reached by Psoriasis Philippines, by the Philippine Dermatological Society because of this initiative. And again, congratulations to all the team. Yep. And for the last, is uh, since we had a grant from APIS, it's not just about having these weekends, but we were able to do patient journey series. So we interview different uh, patients so that they can share their story and their journey. And these are some of the behind the scenes. Next slide. <laughs> Tatanungin niyo po ba muna? Tatanungin niyo na lang kayo. Apo. So you can watch this patient journey stories in our YouTube channel and our Facebook fan page. So thank you everyone. And I hope that this inspired you to also do these creative and innovative programs in in health literacy for your organizations as well. And for next, I am very privileged to introduce the next, my fellow winner in the APIS Innovator Program. Sadly, she cannot join us tonight or today, but she has prepared a video for her presentation. So first, let me introduce Kara Magsanok Alikpala. She is the founding president of the I Can Serve Foundation the Vice President of Cancer Coalition Philippines, and also the advisor and founding member of Philippine Alliance of Patient Organizations. She is also a member of the Lancet Commission on Women and Cancer. And after this video, 
Ms. Joy will go on the screen to share how can you uh, submit your proposals in the APS Innovator Program. So take it away. The I Can Serve Foundation set up the Ating Dibdibin program, or Take Your Breast Care to Heart, to save more lives. Breast cancer is the number one cancer in the Philippines. Ating Dibdibin started out as a community-based early breast cancer detection program. Through the years, it expanded to become a full-blown breast cancer control program. The program promotes early detection, early diagnosis, access to timely and affordable treatments, patient <coughs> navigation, and supportive care. The program has six city partners, and one of them is the Gig City, where the program was introduced in 2012. They have continually introduced innovations, so the Ating Dibdibin program remains responsive and relevant. To enhance the program, the I Can Serve Foundation created Circle of Life, a project to build the data and digital infrastructure of Ating Dibdibin to identify gaps in cancer care and enhance monitoring and evaluation. But now to implement, you have to work with the NGU. And basically, uh, I realized that the importance of the NGU is huge when it comes to health because of the budget, for one, but because also you need to mobilize, you need to be closer to the uh, communities. The Swiss ambassador to the Philippines, Alan Gasquen, and the gig mayor, Lani Cayetano, led the call to rally support for the program among leading champions of the cancer community. The city of the gig sees the potential for more effectiveness and efficiency heralded by the circle of life. Data and digital infrastructure will help us a lot. As another pioneering project, this will enhance what we already have with Ating Bibdibin. Good data and analytics can help bust barriers to quality and timely care for breast cancer. Data can immediately demonstrate the causes of delay in the patient journey, including challenges that have yet to surface. Data can be the solid basis to design solutions. It can also tell if your response is effective and impactful. To design the program and the platform, I Can Serve partnered with Dash Labs. They study the existing patient referral pathways and patient journey documented in diaries in Taguig City. They also reviewed the best format for the platform that was easily accessible for the users. They interviewed patients, patient navigators, representatives from the city health office and the Taguig Pateros District Hospital. They also met with representatives of government agencies that provide financial assistance so the platform can also indicate the time it takes to get financial assistance and the average amount of assistance they each receive. The platform is web-based and similar to a patient form one fills out in a health provider's office. It includes a demographic and socioeconomic profile, social and personal history, it also details the financial journey of the patient. The basic information is collected by the patient navigator with the expressed and signed consent of the patient. The platform includes a section for doctor's notes from the clinical exam. It also records every patient visit and procedure or treatment the patient undergoes. Each patient, each user like the patient navigator and health provider are provided with a QR code. A barangay or a community health center also has its own QR code. The goal is to align with the World Health Organization guidelines. 
in order to get in front of the problem of the high incidence and death rate of breast cancer, a community or a country should reach a point where 60% of those diagnosed should have early stage breast cancer. Stages 1 to 2. Cancer diagnosis from evaluation, imaging, tissue sampling, and pathology should not take more than 60 days. 80% of those diagnosed with breast cancer must complete treatment. May pagiging high-tech pa tayo. Magiging ehemplo naman tayo sa ibang mga NGO, di ba po? Training was done in eight batches. This included the patient navigators, the IT team, the doctors, nurses of the Taguig City Health Office, and the Taguig Pateros District Hospital. We always strive to improve or provide something new or something um, in addition to what we have been doing before. Bilang patient navigator po, ang natutunan ko po sa Circle of Life, madami po kasi less time po sa paggawa namin. Minsan po kasi nag-overtime pa kami sa bahay. Ngayon po, pindot-pindot lang po sa pag may patient na kami, okay na po, matatapos na po yung gawa namin. May improve po ang aking pagiging patient navigator time to time. Magkakaroon kami ng uh, communication, number one communication sa pasyente, updated kung ano yung gagawin sa kanya, kung ano pa yung pwede kong ibigay sa kanya na uh, regarding po sa mga services ng ating lungsod ng tagig na sa ngayon ay patuloy naman pong ini-implement po sa lahat ng pasyente na may breast cancer. Kasi before ma'am, sa totoo lang, ang daladala naming logbook is makapal, may bag kaming daladala, parate. Ngayon, cellphone na lang ang kailangan namin para... Lahat ng patient namin is ma-record namin. So, very accessible na para sa amin. At mapapabilis yung communication namin uh, between us, navigator, at sa mga doctors namin. The IT team and leadership team determine who can have access to certain information. The IT and leadership team have access to the dashboards generated by the platform. These real-time boards can give an overview on what the patient journey was like, how long it took, identify reasons for delays and other pain points. It can also spot trends, establish goals, predict outcomes, and show where patients may have dropped out of the program. A total of 90 people have been trained in Taguig City. Program rollout is ongoing and the technical team of Dash Labs and Taguig have been monitoring and guiding the process. Kaya namin to, no? Ano man ang mabibalaki ng program at kodas. Sa gusto namin magpagbigay ng mataas na ang test of television para sa mga kapwa namin. At lagi nga, sinagabi na namin ngayon, sinagabi na namin na think big, dream big. Yung love for the program, yun ang pinaka-importante. Kaya I think this one, no, the Circle of Life Project, will also be successful because itong mga taong ito may puso para sa program. The I Can Serve Foundation hopes to duplicate Circle of Life with its other city partners. It will offer the platform for use of those interested to set up ating dibdibin or their version of a breast cancer control program. Hopefully, it can also integrate with existing health systems. The end game is to have local government have healthy mothers and daughters who can live long, productive lives to build and nourish families. Families that can drive economic growth in the community, in the country. I Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Kara. Hello, everyone. I am Joy Ong, Patient Engagement Director in Novartis for Asia Pacific, Middle East, and Africa. And I've had the pleasure and the honor of being part of APIS for the past two years. It has been nothing short of amazing to see the convergence of patient communities and key healthcare stakeholders united in a common goal of broadening patient access 
and ensuring that there is real and practical impact on the ground. I am even more inspired and energized to see these innovative patient initiatives such as Wellness Weekends Philippines and the Circle of Life program being scaled up to reach more patients and improve their journey to health. Congratulations to Paul. Congratulations, Sir Joseph de Guzman and the whole team from Sorfil. And also kudos to you, Kara, and everyone behind I Can Serve, Dash Labs, and the City of Taguig. You guys really rocked. Mabuhay kayong lahat. And because of the success of this maiden program, I'm very happy to share that we are returning with another season of the APIS Innovator Program. So next slide. We will be selecting patient organizations that have been creating impact through innovative patient initiatives and partner with them to grow and scale these programs. First, by providing financial support to fund even bigger impact. Um, we will be providing visibility through promotional efforts and also provide access to the APIS network, which is currently comprised of 2,000 partners, experts, and thought leaders for coaching, mentorship, and guidance. Next slide. This year, we are looking for initiatives for the following categories. There are three. First is health literacy. These are four initiatives that have significantly driven disease awareness among patient communities. We have health policy shaping or initiatives that have accelerated access to healthcare in partnership with policymakers. And lastly, digital health and communications. We are looking for disruptive initiatives in the area of digital and data solutions in partnership with tech or telemedicine innovators or even viral digital campaigns for patient community audiences. Your submissions will be assessed by an expert panel according to their impact to the patient community, their originality or innovativeness, their potential to scale and be replicated in other countries or disease areas, their fit to one of the categories um, I just mentioned uh, previously, and finally, the potential to grow even further and increase the level of impact. So if Paul's and Kara's journey with the Innovator Program has sparked a fire in you, and if you would like to level up your own innovative patient initiative, then this one's for you. As of today, the APIS Innovator Program 2023 submission page is officially live. So please tell us how you're making impact in your patient community and how you would like to take your initiative to further grounds. Please hurry. The application closes on 7th of April, so there's really no time to waste. And two weeks after that, we will be announcing the finalists who will be joining us in a closed door pitch presentation with our expert panel on May 15th. You may visit our webpage. Um, it's on this uh, uh, slide, uh, the next slide, at apisinitiative.com or simply scan the QR code on the screen in front of you where you can find more information um, and you can also submit your entry here. We're really looking forward to receive your submissions. So that's it for me. Thank you for listening. And now I'd like to turn you over to our APIS Council, to Ruth, Rod, Dr. Stanley, Julie, Dr. Mahira, Sunki, Carmen, Bahija, and Dr. Adam for the final closing remarks. Thank you.